I do uh, a, quite a range of uh, hair lengths and styles, you know, anything from, uh, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm in the Beverly Hills area, so, uh, actually right in Beverly Hills, so, you know, there's a lot of classic and glam looks, you know, but I like to also do very extreme looks as well, so there's a mix there. Uh, I like to have fun with it, but I wanted to do something that was a little bit more on what's happening today, and that would be a little bit more of mid to shorter lengths, you know what I mean? Without going pixie, that is. Now, when we talk about volume, I feel like volume is probably one of the top, top, if not the most top thing spoken about in the chair. You know, very rarely do people come in and say, hey, uh, yes, I'd like the flattest haircut possible. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it, it might happen. I mean, there are maybe once or twice, but in one's career. But most of the time, people want volume. But here's the thing, what exactly does that mean? Does that mean I want volume here? Does that mean I want height? Does that mean I want width? Does that mean I want body, like movement and this? See, volume can mean so many different things, you know? And so I think what happens is, at the end of the day, it's all about communication and understanding what your client means by volume, you know? Um, so that's why I have a few different things. Now, this was, of course, a long mannequin, and I went ahead and just cut some length here. So it is essentially a little bit of a bob shape with slight length in the front, no layers whatsoever, no graduation, nothing, because I wanted to start off this way and show you what I like to do, as well as uh, I'll do the shape cutting, and then I'll do a little bit of uh, texturizing on some tips that I like to use when promoting volume. So. For this uh, example, there's two different things here. There can be, and the only reason I'm looking here is there's a, a, a mirror there. So there's width volume, okay? So instead of having that hair that's just flat, straight down, boom, which also is a good look, you know, a sleek bob, I mean, that's so classic, there's nothing wrong with that. But let's say they want a little bit of a, you know, maybe they like to wave it to or give it that S bend and they want it kind of messy, some texture but they want the volume of a little bit of width, you know, some movement instead of it being totally flat. Well, also you, you curly hairs out there, you know that if you let it stay this way and it's one length, you have a triangle, okay? So what's a good way to add volume this way? Well, it's very simple. I just go with a very round layer shape. So what I would do here, and I'm a big fan of the first section I like to block off, front and back front and back, just like that. Um, y twice, why not? Okay, so this is the first thing I like to do is let's just break that up, okay? Front and back, and, and how do I do that? I just lay the comb, find that high point, maybe you call it the apex, whatever you like to call it, just that high point, because that high point is going to, that will be my pivot point, no pun intended, uh, of the uh, mannequin here, but you wanna find that point where that way, you base your layering off of here, and then no matter how the hair is going to lay, it's gonna be great. You won't any, get any crazy hanging over pieces or anything. So I will start with a center profile section too as my guide. Now, there's two different things here, okay? So first, let's talk about round layer. Now, ultimately with this type of length, we know anything pretty much below the occipital, that's not gonna reach, you know, unless you're going really, really short, okay? So I'm talking about relatively what's happening in the chair these days for me. It could be a little bit different for you guys, but I would say at this point, I feel like the world to the, for the most part is very influenced around the social media world, you know? Um, so I'm sure you've seen it. Okay. Now, what I like to do here is I like to visualize from occipital to that high point and this is a curve. So I'm not creating a perfect circle. I'm literally just watching the, the shape of the head. So all I'm doing here is, and there is a little bit of over directing happening here. So am I going absolute true to head shape? A little bit, okay? But there will be a little bit of, uh, how should I say, over directing going on. But what I do is I choose those two points and I go to the middle. So this is the middle, and I go 90 degrees from the head shape. So that would be like this. And if you're not sure what that is, just use your comb, see? The comb helps you figure that out. So I go at the low crown, okay? Boom. 
So I go there. So essentially what's happening is this hair here is slowly over-directed there, and the hair underneath is a little bit over-directed upward. So it's almost like this, okay? But from there, what I'm doing is, and you can see here, that's the length. So you know you're not going to be cutting too much length off. And then I will create my guide from here. And what I'm cu cutting, I'm cutting pretty much to the shape of what's below it. So I'm mimicking parallel like right here. Now, you can point cut it if you like. I'm going to cut it straight or rounded rather. And what I like to do is start here and I, and I do this move. Okay, and I'm cutting like that, so, okay. So here we go, I'm gonna start off here. And slowly but surely, it's like I'm carving it, okay? So, um, if you notice, I used a little bit more of the inside of the blade, not just the tips of the blade, just slightly curving. So this isn't a perfectly straight line, as you notice. It's slightly curved. When I let that go, you're gonna see that it blends nice, so you're not gonna see choppy lines or anything, okay? Now, let's move all this out of the way. So as you can see, that section, I don't know if it's hard to see, but you can see, look, there is some movement and layer put in there, okay? But it, there's no, like if I comb it straight, there's not gonna be a heavy weight line or anything, see? And that's what you want. And then I will just simply pivot off that and keep going. Now. No over-directing happened here. Now, if you want to add a little bit of, uh, see, look at this. I'm looking at the, the guideline. See that? It's, it's slightly rounded. If I want to go in and point cut from here, by all means, go for it, you know? I just wouldn't, you know, tear up that guideline too much. You know, you just want to make sure that stays intact very well. That way you keep the shape going. Now, if you have slightly longer as you go forward, I would just simply over direct to the previous. If it's really done like that, then you can of course over direct farther back. I'm keeping it fairly standard. Uh, so in the back of the head, I'm not really over directing at all really, but. Donna but, says beautiful and Jessica says her Rottweiler is watching your live with her and she is so intrigued. Oh good, I love <laughs> that, I love it. We got our dog watching too. Yeah, we have Mr. Bogeyman here too. So see this right here, I am point cutting, but very lightly. I'm not going in too deep there, just enough to hit the guideline. And, okay, I will talk about this though. And that's called, okay, so look at this. You see now, this, this shape, it's, it's giving you a more head shape, nice, okay? The bottom is intact, it's great. It's not that super stacked look, so you have a nice fullness there but you're starting to get volume here. And that's what exactly what you want. Now, wow. I like to do, awesome. ultimately, here, let me do one more section, and then I'm gonna show you what I like to do, what's called the double lift, okay? Now, I talk about this quite a bit, but for those of you who maybe don't know me or haven't heard me talk about this, then, okay, look, see, there's the guy, um, then I will show you. So first, I'm cutting for shape, okay? So what's important when you point cut for shape is you wanna make sure your the top points and the low points are fairly similar, okay? You don't wanna be going all over the place. You know, this keeps a strong shape, okay? And let, actually, you know what I said one more? I lied, I'm gonna do one, one more, okay? Because this way, this whole quarter panel here, and I will over direct this one slightly, just because it's behind the ear, and it is a bob. So here you go. All right, let's look for that, uh, that guide, there it is. And here we go, notice um, as, fairly parallel to the hair when I'm doing this, you know? I'm not angled like this, cutting a big old chunk. So you wanna be fairly parallel to the hair, so like this, see? And you know, you're gonna get a few soldiers, you know, those long pieces that end up, just cut those bad boys off. Okay, so there you go, you see that? Bam, okay, now, if you look at this quarter panel back here, I know I'm talking cars, but you get the idea. So when you shake, look at all this, look at all that movement, but then if I comb it down straight, you don't see weight lines, okay? But I like to add, if you like to add a little bit more fun, a little bit more texture, I do the double lift. And what is the double lift? Well, it's simply this. I took my guide, or I created a guide, okay? And I cut it. But the double lift is redoing that same exact 
section. So I'm going to pull it up one more time. Same distribution, same elevation. This time, I'm leaving a lot of hair out, okay? Because this allows me to take a very good look and inspection on that section. So what does this section show me, okay? This section shows me that there's a little bit of texture here, a little bit of texture there. It's very thick in the middle. I don't know why, but that's just the case. So I double lifted it so that I can go in with deep point cut at this point. So now that I've created this, I want to break into the shape a little bit more without destroying this line. And how do I do that? Well, I want to make sure that I leave enough hair out and then I'm going to go as parallel as possible. So I don't want to be doing this because now that's going to destroy everything. So I'm here. I don't want to do too much here. Look, it's already see-through, but here you want to start breaking that up. Okay. And now look, now it's a little bit more even. Do you see that? The consistency of the hair is a little bit more even. And that's what I want to see. Teresa, okay. wow. <laughs> yeah, it, listen, it's all about details. So good. Right? It's all about details. So good. So that's why I call this the double lift. So look, when I just lift it up again, it's good. Now, there's a little bit in here. So I'm going to go in like that. Look at that. And then let go. Boom. Now, let me tell you, all of this is all about detail. So the more you concentrate on detail, the more you and anyone who looks at the shape is going to appreciate. Great okay? visual, nice. This is so fascinating. And JR said it looks much softer. Wow. Awesome. And so again, I'll do one more time here, uh, the, uh, the uh, double lift. So here we go. So again, double lifting is making sure you elevate it the same, distribute the same. The only difference is you're holding more hair out, okay? And if you, like I said, if you need to adjust it, once you've got that, then go for it, okay? Because once you've locked in where your uh, elevation is, you can move a little bit and you'll be fine. Just make sure you hold it tight. So as I take a look at this, I'm analyzing. So, you know, in my videos, you see me moving really fast and that's only because I'm fast forwarding and I'm, make, I'm trying to jam as much info into a video as possible. But in this case, I can actually spend time and break it down for you guys and why and what am I actually looking at? Sandy says very informative and she loves how you're explaining each step. Thank oh, you. Oh, good. And here's another thing. Watch this. And this will happen a lot. You'll see hair that doesn't perfectly stand straight up. Sometimes it curves a little, right? So therefore, if I go straight in, boom, I'm going to be cutting chunks out. So what you can do with your left hand, assuming you're a right-handed color cutter, you know, right for the other, but either way, you can now make it so that where your scissors are, it's going to go in a little more parallel. You see? So you manipulate this hand for your cutting hand instead of moving this too much. So it's like if I held it like this and it's curving there and I cut here and I'm just gonna mess it up to show you, but watch, that's, that's too crazy. There's nothing wrong with this. I'm not saying this is wrong because in my opinion, there is no right and wrong, but, but this is not exactly what we were going for. So what I wanted to go for was a little bit more softer, you know, like this. So I'm curving this hand to adjust to my cutting hand now this is a little bit more, instead of cutting giant chunks like that, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Boom. Okay, so there's that. Now, let me just go ahead and, oh, one more thing too I want to mention. So I'm going to go to the right rear quarter panel here. So I'm going to follow through again. And uh, now, if you notice, now I'm a right-handed cutter, right? And I'm still standing to the right of the section. Now, in why? Because look, maybe you go like this and you want to cut it this way. Well, I guess there's nothing wrong with that either. You know, you just want to make sure your elevation and distribution is the same. Okay. Because sometimes we can forget and you know, with your hands, maybe you go a little too low, too high. I like to do it this way because essentially what I'm doing is I'm always cutting outwards from the uh, from the uh, high point. So I'm always going out or around, but starting from here instead of going upwards into the middle. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to finish this here. Again, look at that. Boom. There is the uh, guide. Okay. There we go. And one line. And that way the whole back will be done. And the reason why, and again, I'm 
over directing this very last piece just ever so slightly because it's behind the ear okay and a little more parallel and again this this one is tiny uh, point cuts this isn't the the deep point cuts okay and then one more thing again the double lift just to get a little action a little more textured action there see the very top it's okay maybe in here I go a little bit more voila very fun see this way you get a consistency in separation as well before you even get into the mega texturizing which is key okay so now I am going to show you another thing that I like to do because now this is for round okay a round shape that you get a little bit more movement which is nice this is more of a, a classic approach okay now I'm going to show you one texturizing move and then one slight alteration that you can also do, but I, I'll do that after the texturizing. So again, we're going to go into separate front and back. Now, this time I'm standing on the opposite side. Now why? Because I'm going to come up from underneath the hair and create extra volume this way. Because this creates volume that way, we're now going to add a little bit of height without giving too much of short layers at the very top. Because if they're very concerned about that, then this is a great way to go about that. So, again, take the same section in the middle profile. Monica loves the way you section, by the way. Oh, Using good. Thank you. Comb. Thank you very much. Okay, so here we go. Again, uh, occipital to high point. And in, I'm not going to do 90 degree. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do is over direct a lot. I'm going to over direct a lot where? Towards the face. This way. Okay, so I'm gonna go here. And by the way, I'm using, okay, so look at this, you see that? I'm over directing a lot. So actually, instead of uh, taking the comb and uh, releasing this way, which can leave a little bit of a, a lump there, I'm going from the inside and doing this. It just helps a little bit, but you can do whatever makes you comfortable. Okay, so the reason why I'm over directing a lot that way is because I'm gonna now take my texture shear and come up from underneath, okay? And what I'm essentially doing is creating a short to long this way texture because I'm over directing. And think about it though. If I add this like that, and when I let this go, I'm gonna have a nice shape of short under here that's gonna give me a little bit of lift. So I'll give you an example. Here we go. You'll see me do this in videos too. Here we go. Oh gosh. Boom, okay, and then I would say anywhere from half to maybe even two thirds in. And here I am here, and I'm slowly, uh, um, progressively cutting here. So I, I, you see I started here, and then I will skip that and go to the next. So I'm, I'm, I'm going all the way up the section. And if you notice, I'm gonna slowly start uh, keep moving up with this hand until I do just the middle third. No, no, none of the ends. We already did that with point cutting. Then I let go, and now this naturally jumps a little extra, you know? Now the beauty about this is this is not messing with the outer shape at all because we already cut that cleanly. And that's the advantage of using a texture shear. Not any texture shear, but a 20% texture shear, okay? I probably on this hair wouldn't use a 45% texture shear because as you know, one snip, 45% of the hair is gone. There's not a lot of hair left, so you don't want to do that. So one important thing to think about too is don't redo that. Once that's done, move on and take a new section, okay? And again, forward, I'll do it in real time now, boom. Now look at this, see the middle? There's a lot already taken out there. I don't need to do anything there, boom, boom. And then I skip to the very top here, boom, boom. Done. So even though it looks like I'm going fast, like I said in the videos, I am very much thinking of and looking at each piece and it just calculates in my head and then I go. And sometimes, believe it or not, I won't do it any because I'll look at it. I mean, I sometimes a little bit go through the motion, but there's, I don't believe there's anything that needs to be cut so that I don't and I let, let it go. So now, as you can see, um, just with my hands too, you see all that separation okay and Carol wants to know if you can show your scissors 
Yes, absolutely. And then see this? Boom. Okay? And so, one more thing I'm going to do is, let's say you're like, you know what? I'm not really a texture shear type of gal or guy. So I like to use regular shear. That's my thing. Okay, fair enough. There's no problem with that. You want to do that? Then do the same thing over direct up again. And this time, we're still going to the middle third of the hair, but this time you just use your regular shear. And by the way, this is the wolf shear. See my little logo there? And then my signature on the actual blade. Uh, they come in six inch, six and a half, and seven inch as well. Wolf shear. Okay. Um, so what I do here is I change my cutting position from here to here. Okay, so look, not a lot of thumb in there. See that? That's why I... I shaved out this little groove so that you can do this move. Anyway, so now I want to go very parallel to the hair here, and I'm essentially just carving out the middle third. So here, you know, I'm not doing all that. That's too much. That's crazy. But I'm just cutting out little, shaving out little arcs, okay? And this helps as well. This, you see that? I'm shaving out a little arc, and then I take that section, boom, let it go. Boom, let it go. Boom, let it go. And because I'm doing it at this angle, I'm going from shorter to slightly longer because obviously if I cut pieces too short there, they're gonna pop up and you'll see that. So that's why I do it. And when it lays back down, you have that good separation wow. and then you didn't you know, do the texture shear if you're not in that. So just to show you a little versatility in that, uh, in that move. Mm -hmm. So. Megan was asking how you would approach this, like if they had thinner hair. So would you still texturize it in the same way? Or? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Actually, believe it or not, this is one of those myths, okay? Super, super fine, fine hair that not only the actual hair itself is fine, but also the amount, there's not a lot. That's when you wanna make sure cutting a strong shape is, I mean, you have to. Because if you don't, you know those lines are going to show everywhere. And the beauty about that is you definitely still want to texture hair like that. Because, um, I mean, obviously, if there's maybe, I don't know, if it's too, too thin, obviously, you know, you don't want to do too much. But uh, let's just say it's about a medium amount, but it's very, very fine. Uh, what happens we know with fine hair is it just lays limp and flat no matter what you do. Even if you add a little bit of layer, it's still just let, limp, but then it's got a little choppiness to it. So you, to blend things and to add a little bit of airiness, I think with fine hair, it's about adding that airy feeling, okay? So what you want to do is you still want to use the same technique, but maybe alter it so that as when it's in the uh, underneath parts, you can go a little bit uh, closer in, okay? And just go far, you know, closer in with the carving or the texture shear. And as you get up to here, don't be afraid to do a little bit because you still need it, okay? Because if you can create separation, uh, that's key. That adds the illusion that there's actually more hair, even though you're cutting some and there's less hair. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, here is a very, very, one extra thing. It's a slight, yeah, it's a slight difference, but it makes a huge difference. Now, uh, let's say the hair is shorter, or let's say you just have kind of a, a shag maybe, you know, maybe, maybe uh, you know, shags are in too. You know, I love shags. So uh, obviously this isn't one, but let's pretend that we're gonna put it into one. So let's go to the back again. Because what I essentially did was a very simple round layer, but round to the head shape layer, not a circle round layer. And now, all I'm gonna do here to add this type of volume, like upwards volume, and this is particularly good for the people who have this type of head shape, where you have the high point, but then it's not nicely round here, it's almost flat, you know, it, like at an angle though. I don't know if you've ever seen that head shape, but you know, you get your high point and then it gets a little flat here and then you have the occipital bone. So what this does is it actually creates a new shape on the outside of their head so that you don't even know that the head goes in like that. And I'll show you. Very, and this is very simple too. This is actually 
going back to basics here, but I just know that it works so well. And this can go down to uh, pixie length if you really wanted to. So what I showed you before was keeping it soft, not going too heavy with layering, and doing the round. But this time, what I'm going to do is we're going to go to the high point and we're going to do vertical square. Now, I am going to go a little bit more uh, aggressive with this one just to prove a point. I mean, not that you would do this on this length, but I just want to show you. Uh, but if you just wanted to make a, actually I'll do both. If you want to do a slight altercation with this, and if you notice if I pull vertically square, you know, I have an angle here because that's on purpose. That's because we wanted it soft. But this time we want way more volume in that, in that crown. So I'm going to go here and then over direct square vertically. And then that now becomes my guide and I just go completely parallel to the, to the floor. So here we go. You ready? We're cutting out this angle and action. So we're going to go here, point cut. And I use point cut because look, if you're going to get volume like this, you might as well have fun with it, right? Okay. And then, of course, you know what's coming. Double lift, baby. Here we go. One more time. So now we're adding that extra boom, 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 boom. And then, boom. So now, now we have even more volume. So when you look at it even, oh gosh. So when you look at it from here, the side, what happens is we get the volume here and it fills out this flat part that's in here. And that'll be more evident when I go shorter, but I wanted to show you if you only wanted a slight change it on this type of shape, that's how much you would do. Let me continue so you can get a little bit more of a, even more showing. So from here, look at that. Not a lot will come off, but a little bit, and that does make a difference. And straight up, here we go. Okay, and then maybe double lift again. Okay. And again, this is all done on dry hair, but look, do it on wet too. It's up to you. But look at this. Well, I don't know if you can even see that, but... Thank you. Yes, look, more, more volume. I mean, you just... You, you can't go wrong with extra volume when it comes to vertical square, okay? So now, let me do one more on this side, just so I have something to play with there. Okay. Any more questions out there? No? Okay. So now I'm going to do a very, very, uh, a much shorter one, okay? So here we go. Same thing. And this is particularly good if you've done horizontal square for the shag type shape, and now it's time to get into the crown. So you've already gotten it squared like this, even though this isn't, but let's pretend. And now we want to add that extra boom on top, which actually looks great with shags. So again, we'll try to take as much hair from the occipital as possible and over direct that up. And here we go. Now I'm going to go this short because why not? Just to show you how much. Okay, here we go. And again, you know, just try to be as consistent as possible. That's the key, you know. Ultimately, what we're doing is creating a shape outside of the actual head shape. So you're creating a different shape than what their head shape is. Because let's face it, sometimes if you follow it, <clears throat> you know, Aesthetically speaking, not everybody's head shape is the same. So we're just creating something different on the outside. So what's gonna happen here when I drop it is we're gonna get volume here and then this flat area will be filled in. So, okay. So, you know, even when you have it messy like this, we've got volume this way, which covers up the dent of the head, if they had that. And then, of course, volume upwards as well. And I'm not talking spiky. It doesn't have to be spiky. Just, it just pops up more. And that's the beauty. Now, what you end up doing under here, that's totally up to you. You know, if you want to release more weight doing um, 
horizontal square as well, that's totally fine. If you want to take that and go head shape, that's totally fine too. Depends on how mullety you want the hair, right? So I'm going to keep following this one more time and show you. So this is the good thing, because if you have that hair that is maybe, you know, it can be prone to frizz, you know, or, you know, it's, uh, it's not quite curly. It's not quite straight. Maybe it's that in between. And you just know that maybe it's slightly on the coarse side. And you know that that day you shampoo it, it's just a little too puffy. It's just a little, it just lays weird, you know. Um, this would be a great addition to do because you want this. That's where extend comes in big because, you know, only second and third day is your hair looking way better. You know, I, and, and who knows, maybe you press it even to the fourth or fifth. I don't know, but nothing wrong with that. So you just, you know, spray some of this in. And mind you, this isn't texture spray. It is dry shampoo. So texture spray is obviously going to give you more texture, but this just gives you more of that natural feel and a refreshed, clean feeling. Because ultimately, let's face it, when it comes to hair, it's not just the look, but it's how it feels, you know? Because even if your hair is looking good, if it just feels bleh, you know, you just have to wash it or something, you know? Okay, so let me show you from the side again. Oop, there you go. So see from here, definitely volume. Boom. And, you know, don't concentrate on this, but from here up, and you can see that. Boom. And are you over directing to the guide for that last section you did? See that? It's even a little bit more like that without teasing or anything. Megan, um, Megan was asking. So, okay, what, what was the question again? Megan's asking, are you over directing to the guide? No, so uh, what I'm doing here is, you know, I pulled my uh, original section and I'm just pivoting, that's it. Only maybe over direct once I'm getting to the ear, depending on what my length is down there, but uh, yeah, I'm just going straight where it is. So let's say this. So my elevation is the same, but my distribution is exactly where it lays. Boom. Hmm. Okay, so now could you? Of course you could. It just all depends what you want to see. If you want to see this, when it comes to the back, if you want to see, you know, perfectly following it, you don't over direct. If you want to see a slight graduate, or excuse me, gradual length, towards the front, then I would over direct. Ultimately, it's what you want to see on that client's head, and then you just do, just like that. Boom. You know, I am a fan of fun, separated hair, but I'm also a fan of the actual shape being strong, meaning if you were to just comb it and have it laid, let's say you're having a day where you're not into putting a lot of product in it, you just want it to be, and that's that, you know? Well, the beautiful thing is when you create strong shapes, the shape just lays. You don't have to enhance it because the haircut has done it for you. It is in there and you're not going to see, you know, chops and weird pieces. It's just going to be boom. And that's what I think separates, you know, the beauty of some things. You know, you, you see a flow that's in there. Maybe you don't even know where it starts and where it ends. You just know it's in there, you know? <laughs> Megan says, thank you. You're so fun to watch. Thank you for that. Well, I just love doing this, you know? So there you go. And then look at that. It's so funny because you can tell that this is not as layered, but you don't quite know where the heck does that even start or end. You just know it's in there. Boop. There you go. So that's my um, little quick tip on cutting for volume. Uh, I want to add one more thing too though, which is the sides. So I know I concentrated on here, but let's face it, you can use this anywhere. You can use this for the front of the hair. Many of you who do watch my videos, you know that I'm a fan of framing the face. And let me just show you, I'm not going to, oh. so that's, you know, that type of shape. But let's, what about this girl right here? Okay. This is, and mind you, this is true bedhead right here because 
I, I did this mannequin months ago and I shoved it in a box in my closet and I just took it out and it still looks good, you know, pretty much. <laughs> so that's pretty much like bedhead. But what I mean is, look, we still have volume right in the very front here, you know, through the face framing, okay? And we've got volume and width here, you know, which is beautiful. So again, have fun with the outer shapes of what you're creating. Think about why you're doing that to, in relation to the head that you're working on. And then go within that shape and break it up to your desire. Hopefully you got something from this. I had a lot of fun. Uh, again, my name is Philip Wolf, Philip Wolf Hair on Instagram. And today was about the trifecta of volume, the trio, if you will. High Amplify, 20% off at Salon Centric, and of course you can win yours for free. Just go to their IG salon, at Salon Centric and check it out. Thank you very much everybody. And Have one more time day. where they can follow you. Oh yeah, you Instagram. can follow me at Philip Wolf Hair on Instagram. So that's uh, Philip with one L, Wolf with two Fs, Hair. Hopefully you know how to spell that.